So before you can become a god, you have to learn to wield some magic, specifically the magic to manipulate space and time. And uh, by space and time, I actually mean space, because uh, time is actually just the fourth dimension of space. Now, to some of you, this may sound like a weird idea, but this is actually a common knowledge among physicists, computer scientists, and uh, mathematicians, and pretty much anybody who invests some time to think about the nature of the world. Okay. So, if you are in high school and uh, can't seem to understand why time is the fourth dimension of space, then this segment of the video is for you. You are probably familiar with this kind of graph. Uh, this, uh, this axis is time and this axis is uh, position. And here we have an object A and this graph represents the position of A over time. Now. If you are inside this graph, you are the point, the object A itself, you will see that you are moving through the uh, space over time. But since we are outside of this graph and we look at it uh, as a whole, and we can see that time itself is just a dimension of this 2D space. So this is a two-dimension world with uh, one axis as the space and one axis as time. So by creating this particular graph, I literally became God. Okay, so this is the noise texture in Blender 2.81, and this is a 4D texture. Apart from the original 3D coordinate system, we also have this fourth dimension, that is the W dimension. Now, this W dimension is actually the time dimension, and uh, you can see that the texture is changing over time, right? However, this dimension is uh, not different than the other three dimension. It's uh, basically the same. In fact, I can now create a separate XYZ node and a combined XYZ node, and combine the X and Y and leave the Z as zero. Now we have a 2D texture that uh, repeat along the z-axis. Okay. Now I can connect the z dimension to the w dimension, and we have the same style of noise, right? However, now the z-axis become time itself. So the four dimensions are basically the same. Uh, you can uh, actually change uh, pretty much everything, and uh, they still run the same, right? So, you can see that time is just another dimension of space, okay? Alright, now with that out of the way, let's take a look at how we can manipulate space and time. Alright, before you can understand the more advanced math, you need to understand the more basic stuff, okay? So this is the mapping node in Blender 2.81. And uh, this is the place where you input your, your texture coordinate. And these are the three simple transformations. And um, you need to understand how these transformations work before you can move on to the more advanced kind of math. Okay. So first, let's look at the simplest transformation operation, the, the translate operation. All right. So this is the 2D space and we have a point A and we need to move it to point B okay and the way we move it is simply add 2 to the x dimension of point A and we get point B and that's it we simply add values to the original coordinate to get a new coordinate and that add operation is called the translate operation so this location is basically just a simple add operation. If you add a positive value, you move the point to the right, and if you add a negative value, you move the point to the left. And that's it. And uh, you can replace this uh, operation using a vector map and choose the operation as add. This will serve exactly the same as uh, changing the location values of the mapping node. Okay, so it's just it's just the, the add operation. Next 
is the scale operation. The scale operation is actually just the multiply operation. You multiply a factor to the original coordinate in order to get a new coordinate. We can multiply 2 to x and y in order to get the point B in this 2D space. And we can multiply 1 to x and 2 to y in order to get point C. So that's exactly how this scale operation works. It's basically just a multiply math. All right. So this is exactly the same as this. Next stuff is the rotation. Now we have a point A and we need to rotate it uh, counterclockwise uh, around the center of the space uh, to the point B. Okay. So you can calculate the coordinate of point B using this formula. And this is exactly the same formula used in this rotation uh, uh, operation. Okay. So that is how you transform single point in space. But uh, the title of this video is about uh, manipulating space and time. So how come I am explaining manipulating points? It's actually just a matter of perspective. From the perspective of the point being rotate, the entire space rotate back. Okay. So from the outside perspective, the point rotate, but from the perspective of, of the point, the space itself rotate. And same thing applies to translate and scale. If you move a point, it's the equivalent of the entire space being moved back. So you move a point to the right, that's the equivalent of the entire space being moved to the left. So it's not like some mind-bending kind of magic. It's just the matter of information. Everything is just information. And you can use it however you like. And in this case, I appear to be transforming a single point but I can also say that I am transforming the entire space. Alright, so let's take a look at uh, what it does. So we have the UV map here. And I can connect the UV map over here. And uh, let's set everything back to normal. And you can see this, uh, in this black corner is the center of the space. And uh, let's just uh, create a uh, vector map node and connect this one over here. All right, and let's see. We have exactly the same, right? So we can move every point one unit to the right, and that means the entire space is being moved back to the left. All right. Now, if we move every single point on the plane to the left, right? That's the exactly the same as moving the entire space to the right. And you can see that the center of the space is now over here. And this is exactly the same as uh, transforming like so. Alright, so you can see the location of the mapping node is ex exactly the same as the add node here. And let's set this back to the 0. And this also back to 0 and change the operation to multiply instead. Now, we can scale this space like so. We get exactly the same result by scaling like so. So they're exactly the same, right? Now the rotation is a bit more complex because uh, the operation on the x and y axis are different, so we have to uh, create a separate XYZ node and calculate each dimension separately. Alright, so I created uh, the rotation uh, operation here, and we can connect this over here. Alright, now this value is the angle of rotation and you can see that the entire space is being rotated like so. So this is how the rotation works in uh, this mapping node. This is the rotation around the z-axis, okay, 
and uh, you can rotate around the y-axis by replacing uh, the uh, y value with the z value. Okay, okay. So, so yeah, this is how the rotation works. Now, so far, the math operation has been applied exactly the same way on every single point of this space. However, we don't actually have to do that. Now, what if I want to apply a different math on the top part and a different math on the bottom part? Huh? So how do we come about doing just that? And that, my friend, is the topic of the next video.